Well, here we are, another episode of Postcards from the Pandemic. My co-host and producer is now officially Johnny Broker, because- It looks that way. The only reason was because you were on the first one, so. Yeah, <laughs> I got agreed to it somehow. And our first official guest, let's welcome him, Christian Brockhart. Yes. We're, we're happy to have him. Now, I think the best thing about <clears throat> this form of media is that we get to drink beers. Mm. Yeah, so everybody's got one. Yeah. Beautiful. If you watch us at eight in the morning, just know we taped it at five at night, so it's like actually a happy hour. We're not like drinking it. We're not Exactly. Drinking. That was the whole plan. We're <laughs> well, taping it at happy hour. One of the you guys hours. told me about was that I had to have beer. You, you're yeah. like, well, crack a beer. We'll do an interview. I said, all right. Hey, I don't want to be left first, out. Where's that beer from? A uh, uh, shameless plug, this is uh, New England Brewing Sea Hag. Uh, delicious as always, in any scenario, whether quarantine or not. <laughs> and let me and tell you uh, an interesting story. Yeah, pills. Johnny's got one too, the Hoppy Pills. From uh, New England Brewing, Rob Leonard and Company. We'll have to get them on here. But That's right. Plugs, shameless plugs are fine, Christian, by the way, just so you know. It's, you yeah, as many as you want, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so, I, I just so. want to tell a quick story. Uh, the proprietor of New England Brewing, Johnny, did we talk about this the last time? Not last time, no, but I've heard this is a good story. Yeah, yeah. He's heard all my, poor Johnny's heard all my stories like eight times. <laughs> 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 but the proprietor of New England Brewing, which is really got to be considered one of the best craft breweries in the country, if not the world, Rob Leonard was an intern for Smith and Barber back in the was day. Was he really? I kid you not. And the, the classic story was it was the end of the show on a Friday one time. And um, Rob just said, just goofing around, he said, don't worry, guys, I got this. So Brian Smith and I looked at each other, just went like this. Brian turned the mics on and we both walked out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Rob Leonard stayed there going like, guys, guys. <laughs> that's what's going on with Christian Dunn, but you, that's like the equivalent of Christian handing somebody his gun and badge and walking away. Yeah. Hey, you guys, guys got this. this yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Johnny, that's right. We got to we gotta uh, set we the gotta stage for who here. exactly Christian is. And John, I think you should set this up because you've known Christian, you told me today, yeah. since he was, he was, since like he was 16. So, uh, yeah, 15-ish. Yeah, so I've known Christian since about 15. So we want to talk about how, how we're connected to people and all this when we get through. So I've known Christian since he was about 15 uh, through some, you know, uh, his family and some friends of mine. There was, a, a uh, you know, just some family connections there that we originally met each other. And then, um, you know, he's a bit younger than I am, but uh, we both went to college in the same town. He went to the other college in, in Poughkeepsie, New York. So, uh, you know, the uh, Vassar boy. But uh, to the Rose and Gray. fellow Poughkeepsieites. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. So, yeah. we, we had a better view, they had a better schools. <laughs> it was kind of a, you know. so <laughs> I'm from Marriott College, go Red Foxes. Um, so, uh, you know, Christian is a great guy. I've known him for a long time, seen him around town, but he currently makes his living as a detective with New Haven Police Department. So he's one of New Haven finest. So that's right. Cheers, cheers to them. He's my, he's my favorite crime fighter right now. I always <laughs> take <laughs> well, favorite. Sarge retired. Oh, John, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we Sarge wanted to retired. ask you, like, um, as a New Haven cop, like, uh, and, and this is kind of what we did the last time, like, where were you when this all happened? And like, how has it changed your life? So uh, we, um, you know, obviously, we were getting all kinds of stuff from, you know, things were shutting down. And, and probably, I would say when, when they when they started shutting down the restaurants and the uh, uh, the bars and stuff like that. So uh, when Christopher Martins uh, said that they, they had to close at eight o'clock, I'm like, I think it was a Monday. Um, so that's when I was like, oh shit, like things are actually like- <laughs> This is serious. Here. Like, yeah, like, this is now affecting me. <laughs> like, uh, people eating when back Christopher China, Martin's now close. affects my life, like Christopher Martins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and then, uh, so that went on for, they started like, because there's, you know, I mean, there's still so many unknowns uh, of, you know, how it's how it's spread and who's affected and how long are you going to be affected for if you get it again. Um, so it's one of the detectives who uh, I work closely with uh, on the dive team was uh, tested positive. And so my cousin, uh, DeFonso and I were mm -hmm. 
John knows him. Mikey we were DeFonzo, on a, great man. Mikey DeFonzo. We were on a call together, and our boss called us and said, hey, you guys got to come in. We're going to send you home. So, like, initially I'm like, all right, this, he's messing with me here. There's no way uh, that they're going to send us home. So we, started, we went in, and like, listen, this guy tested positive a couple of days ago based on CDC uh, you know, guidelines were going to quarantine you for the next week because however many days prior we had been in contact with him. Let me uh, ask they, you this. They, if you're on the dive team and they're yeah. quarantining your contacts, do they, do they quarantine the fish? <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, well, we're separated from the fish by a mask, you know, so okay. maybe if it was more of a, a contact yeah. scenario. I actually <laughs> thought about bringing my equipment to the PD and wearing it just as like a statement of like, I'm totally secure, but that shit weighs like 80 pounds. I, just, you know. uh, I, didn't, real, so I didn't realize you were a dive guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not the Caribbean. Uh, so we're very few coral reefs in New Haven. Um, so. Yeah, that's wild. I, keep, I, of, uh, I keep peeling back the onion that is Christian. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. If you want to know what it's like to dive in uh, New Haven Harbor, all you have to do is close your eyes and then just start feeling around and guess at what you're touching. <laughs> that so right. so they live my life anyway. So that, that worked pretty well. <laughs> yeah, Johnny's familiar. Yeah. So yeah. they literally, they, they told you all to self quarantine at that point. Yeah. So they sent, they sent a bunch of us home. Uh, and then another guy that, uh, so they sent, I think like six of us home that day, um, because we had been in contact with this individual. So thankfully everyone's fine now, but they, then two of the, two of the people they sent home with me who like, you know, we all work in, in the same, uh, essentially big room. Uh, they tested positive. So they extended our quarantine out another week from the initial seven days. Um, so I, I feel kind of, I, I almost feel like I missed it. You know, I mean, there was so much going on at work with, you know, peaks and valleys yeah. and who was getting quarantined. And uh, I was home doing yard work. You can't, it's not like a job you can work from home. You know, all the people are like, hey, no, right. laptop, go work from home. Are like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Are yeah, you I'm like, sorry, are, you sorry, like you, uh, are you like, are you, are you like Zooming with criminals? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so I know you have that bank. Can you come talk to me at my house? Uh, <laughs> it's like, pardon me. I'll do this for you. Up against the wall. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pound I'm going to throw down. I'm going to throw you these handcuffs. If you put them on, I'd really appreciate yeah. it because that would be very yeah. helpful. <laughs> and, and then, so um, when did you, when did you go back? When did you actually So I've been to... back, uh, I went back last, uh, last Sunday was my first uh, post-quarantine day back. Yeah. And what, um, what's and it was, been like? So it's the, the detectives like, you know, because, because we have some discretion with, um, when and where to interview people and things like that, you know, they've, they've split us up. So we're doing uh, like half shifts basically, um, which, you know, if we do have casework to do at home, you could type or whatever. Uh, but there, you know, it was, I think it kind of, from the administration side, like all of a sudden you, you lose like eight detectives in an afternoon, you know, like, what do you do? Like, yeah. People are still getting shot and stabbed. And yeah, yeah. Still well, uh, that, that was my next question. And... How has the pandemic affected crime? Like, are the, uh, are the criminals, like, do they self-isolate? Are they working yeah. from home? Some of, they... some of, like, when you catch them, they're like, I have corona. You're like, oh, well, that clearly <laughs> didn't stop you from doing whatever you were doing. Um, they, uh, it's, you know, as you'd expect, a lot of stuff has gone down. Um, last week, there was a, sh I don't think anyone actually got shot. But there was a uh, gunshots in the middle of a rainstorm, in a pandemic. People are still like, like, still shooting. You know, yeah. hey, it's crazy. Some <laughs> got really good reasons, man. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. is like I mean, <laughs> you hear people have terrible reasons. I hope they actually have a good reason for this one. Now, yeah. now, Johnny, Johnny had a good question earlier today. You were Johnny. You were talking about the fact that um, you were wondering what happens um, with respect to the way people are kind of paying tribute to the, to the police well, yeah, officers? Yeah, I want to kind of give you some context to that question. So something with me that like kind of rings hollow all the time is, you know, like every time you listen to the radio now, like every company is like, 
we're with our first responders by our brand. You know, it's a very inauthentic, like it just rings yeah. really hollow. But obviously everybody appreciates what you do and it doesn't really say it all the time. But, well, yeah, come on, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here, Chris, and let's roll with me, huh? So, uh, <laughs> but you know, I mean, with you yourself, you know, people in the hospital, because you're in contact with people and other first responders a lot. Like what's something you've seen as like a genuine kindness somebody's shown or just, you know, a group of people, something. So, you know, I think the, you know, the, a couple of, of uh, sort of displays more towards, I think, the medical side, uh, medical professionals who, you know, you see the pictures with like the, the dents from wearing masks and PPE all day. And uh, so last week we did a, in, specifically in New Haven, which has been done elsewhere, but, um, you know, they'll get like the, the police and the fire to like mm -hmm. circle the hospital with like lights and sirens and things, um, which I think, it, you know, it, it's gives you a feeling of solidarity that, yeah. you know, we're in, we're in this together. I think it was generally appreciated. You know, does it go towards a paycheck? No. Does it, are you getting something free out of it? No. But still, it's, I think it's a, it's a, a symbolic display. Yeah, well, it's funny. Um, it's like, um, so do, my wife, my wife works in the emergency department at Yale, as you know, and she, she was around for one of those things. And she, look, at she's, She's not going to be one who's very like, like emotion. I have all the emotion in the family. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you after a few beers, Bruce. You're emotional. <laughs> yeah, so like we're like polar. She doesn't drink. She does it. Yeah, and I, I handle that for both of us too. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, she found it really meaningful. And I know that everybody who works over there really did. They're wasn't there one day somebody was playing, I think somebody, they were playing the bagpipes out bagpipes there. Bagpipes came through, I think like the next day, yeah, they had like the, uh, I think the firemen came through and played back. You know, the cops, we don't play bagpipes, I don't understand, at least in New Haven. You would think that yeah. like, you have like a bagpipe contingent, but yeah. uh, we don't. And, and the other, I guess the other question is, um, do you, so people are trying to do nice things for you and everything, are they, are they reaching out to the police department yeah. and... Uh, so a bunch of businesses have donated food, uh, they've donated pizza or, or meals, which, you know, the guys, or I shouldn't say guys, the, the people, uh, certainly appreciate. And it's, it's been, um, uh, that's been really great. You know, I mean, people donating food to the police department, the fire department, Yale, things like that. Um, so that's, I mean, it's, it's been well received. I, I feel like, uh, um, uh, like an imposter, you know, cause like, I'm, first of all, I'm a detective, so like I'm not, I'm no role, like am I really a first responder? I'm like a, a second responder, you know? <laughs> so I, people, like I see all these signs like, thank you first responders, thank you medical personnel, but yes, thank them. Like, don't thank me, um, I'm not like, I'm, on the, I'm at a desk, you know, like, ah. So yeah, I that's feel, interesting. I feel terrible no, but you are, you're important, man. I mean, um, seriously. Yeah, um, no, you're doing yeah. the, you're doing God's work. Come on. You're doing the yeah. Lord's work. That's right. Speaking of God's I, work, I think we should bring up Christian's uh, other living. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this was, oh, well, one yeah. of the, you know, one of the, one of the things that, you know, everybody's going through different levels of, you know, being affected by this. And of course, uh, you know, Johnny and I were talking about this. Ours is really superficial. <laughs> You know, we yeah. we haven't really been affected in any meaningful way, you know, yeah. as a lot of people have. But but Listen, one Johnny's of them, out walking around. I didn't see him doing that before the pandemic. Because there was a gym yeah. I could go to. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things we were like really looking forward to is <laughs> you and Colin Kaplan have this great thing, the New Haven party bike. Elm and City party bike. Come on. The Elm Please City. The Elm City. Didn't, party didn't bike. your assistant do the homework for you before this? <laughs> you got him as much stuff as you want. He's gonna. <laughs> and so, Johnny and I were so lucky to be able to ride it in the St. Patrick's Day, right down Chapel Street, St. Patrick's yeah. Day. Parade I actually, I think I, I, I think you might be on our Instagram page. We have a great picture of you hanging off the back of it. With like that one, that one panel that we, that we, the, the rain panel, because it was a rainy disaster last year. Yeah, uh, yeah and we were, was, we were so looking forward to this year. We were like high school kids, man. We were talking about, are you ready for the party bike? We're ready for the <laughs> the only time to be in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, ride down the street. And, uh, it was, it was, it was yeah. great. We were thrilled. Johnny has That's yet to pedal, by the way. Uh, I like, pedal, uh, he's I been on it several times. We both, we both ride, got on pedal. the party bike when it was like, there's a bench seat in the back. Everybody else has to pedal. And Johnny and 
there are like, hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're like waving like John's been on it, yeah. John's been on it several times. <laughs> Pat Pisaris. Uh, yeah, I got to tell you, man, I, you know, I miss hanging. We mentioned Christopher Martins. I mean, I miss stuff like that, the St. Patrick's Day parade. Uh, I miss like uh, our Sundays at Christopher Martins. Yeah. Uh, we have to talk to Brian Virtue and Chris Vigilante when we get a chance, because not only is this just a great bar in New Haven, they, I was talking to our friend Rob Oliver the other night and he's like, they support every charitable effort in town. Absolutely. I mean, Let me tell you, Brian, Brian and Chris had a, um, so I don't know if you know, uh, Lisa Seedlars, who's the, um, uh, she lives on Pearl. She's like, she does a lot of the, the neighborhood watch kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but every year they put together like a little, they close off one of the side streets and they do like a little neighborhood party. And Brian and Chris for years have donated the food. Even Brian, gets him, his, himself out there and actually does the cooking and you know so it's you know they're, they're like one of those great little little like neighborhood places that you know I really hope uh not that I, I wish ill on anybody but you know CMS has been there for so long and they're so community-minded and don't yeah, show yeah. this to Brian and let him know that I'm saying compliment. <laughs> <laughs> well the other thing is the other thing we have to mention is they do this amazing thing at Thanksgiving every year where they set up, they come in on Thanksgiving and they set up and it is white linen table service and clothes for people in need. And people come yeah. in, yep. they're treated to a meal, and yeah, those guys are just the best. That's, that's the problem you can't even volunteer for. They've, I mean, they have an overwhelming number of volunteers who want to come out and help them. And they, yeah, it's just an amazing day that they do. It's, it's, uh, it's yeah. The CM's, the CM's road race is every, every year a, uh, uh, a cultural touchstone, if I yes. could be so bold. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we've got some uh, candidates for uh, the next postcard from the pandemic. Because Johnny and I have been talking about, like, of course, this is really mainly just an opportunity to have a beer on Zoom, yeah. you know. <laughs> I'm out. I gotta go to my second one. Hold on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. You go, and then when when he comes back, we've got to get him to talk about his uh, glass half full experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely the glass half full. So we'll see. Ah, what beautiful. Right. I just yeah, we we encourage that. that. I really want to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that's what Johnny so, and I so talked about. I wanna, Yes, go, go. Well, so I, I wanted to say, you know, and, I, and I've related to this story to you probably every time that I've been half in the bag at CMs and I see you and I'm like, <laughs> bro! <laughs> well, so this, this for me, like this, I feel, uh, I, I feel very honored uh, because I, I used to listen to your show years ago in my, uh, my salad days, if you will. <laughs> and I can remember, I can distinctly remember, and I've told you this before, but I can distinctly remember a billboard from WPLR <clears throat> saying, uh, we apologize for what Smith and Barber said this morning. Uh, and it was just like a blanket statement. It was just like part of their advertising <laughs> campaign that like you guys just did off the wall stuff. And uh, they just had like a blanket apology for whatever it was you said. Like, hey, hey, so I don't know it's, it's so funny. Campaign. Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, so I keep, I love those stories because I've forgotten so much of it. <laughs> Gee, wonder why. <laughs> I would, I'm going to pile on top of that. And I, so I've been friends with for Bruce for a bunch of years. So I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit of a brown nose here when I'm talking about <laughs> we were friends for a bunch of years. And we you just said, you know, talking about the PLR days, Anybody that talks to him, he eats it up, man. He just loves it. Just like he 100%. Just it. You <laughs> yes. know what, though? It's like in a genuine <laughs> sense. It's not in like a, I need people to, you know, talk about this cool thing I used to do. It's actually like a genuine interest he has. Like, it, you know, I've been out with him a couple of times, and it's like, come on, Bruce, we got to go. And, like, somebody started talking about the PLR days. 20 minutes later, it's like, oh, Lord. <laughs> let's uh let's face it my ego is like a giant furnace it needs to be fed it needs to be constantly fed. <laughs> well i'll tell you what the, so one of my so one of my enduring memories of uh when i when i was a new officer so i think you guys weren't on the i think it, they had progressed to who was it chaz and aj chaz and aj yeah are, yeah are the current show yep so i got hired as a as a police officer in wallingford in December of 2008, and then in like the summer of 2009, I was doing my field training. So 
my primary field training officer was this like older guy, super grumpy, like stereotypical, like several ex-wives, kids, like just miserable, miserable guy. Right. So <clears throat> he had been through the, he had been in a field training officer forever. Um, so the first thing we had to do in the morning, and this was before smartphones. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, kind of dating myself here, but I think I had like a, a flip phone that I could play snake on or one of those like <laughs> games. So, but we would sign on in the morning. I'm a brand new cop. I'm like, it's vinegar. Let's get after it. You know, he had like 20 years on anything about anything. And I had to take him to the Dunkin' Donuts in the Home Depot Plaza on Route 5, close to Meriden, if you know where that is. He would get coffee and a jelly stick in the record journal. And he would, he would listen to WPLR. And he would then park in an empty parking lot. This is at like, you know, 7.30 in the morning. And he would read the record journal, listen to Chaz and AJ. So I had nothing to do but listen to Chaz and AJ. And would, when he, he would read the paper, the physical paper. And when he was done with each section, he would fold it and tuck it under his leg. <clears throat> and I just sat there. I'm like, I didn't know what to do, you know? <laughs> so I had this experience of like, you know, listening to you in, on PLR. And then now I associate like Chaz and AJ with like sitting in a parking lot as my, as this guy next to me, like didn't want to be near me and would just read the paper and ignore me. So, and, 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 so that's and my association with training officer didn't train you. He trained you to sit in the parking lot. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. interesting. Jazz and AJ have now been at PLR, I think, as long as Brian Smith and I were there. So it's, you know, the great thing about that station is it's just, it's so much part of, you know, the history of New Haven and, and the rest yeah. of the state. Of course, going back to like Stone Man and, and Marsha Simon and Rick Allison and all those guys. So, yeah, that's so I saw, awesome. I saw the Wigmaster. I, and I do air quotes because I don't know his re I don't know his real name, but I saw him for the first time at the Milford St. Patrick's Day Parade like two or three years ago, and uh, it was one of those things where like, you know, I mean, I would say he's like a local celebrity like yourself. I mean, a, you know, regional celebrity if you will. But I saw him and like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, it was almost like he's just he's kind of like a, a heavy guy and had like long hair and he was like didn't give a shit. Who, <laughs> who I was, you know. <laughs> he is. He's the greatest. He is the greatest guy. He is like so smart, and uh, yeah, I just love him. I ran into him in a stop and shop, uh, maybe six months ago or something. I hadn't seen him in a long time, but just, just a great, great guy. Personally, so um, what a great guy he is, but as far uh, as I know, he, he only has one thing he knows how to do. Like, I don't know anything else about the wig master except the Friday <laughs> afternoon wig out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's his it's just job. It's like a little great like, and interesting person. Like, five-minute thing of parties. <laughs> it's fantastic. So, the guy's so, like a landmark. <laughs> so one thing that Johnny and I have gotten going on until so we want to conclude with this is – we know it's so easy to quantify all the bad things that are happening, you know, as part of this pandemic. And, you know, one of the big things is that it's affecting people so differently, you know. So for us, we're, we're lucky, you know, so it, it affects us, but we can self-quarantine. My wife has been trying to get me to self-quarantine for years. Uh, just, she wants it further away from her. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, we're fortunate in that regard. A lot of people on the margins, this is a really, really tough time for them and everything. But, but it does affect everybody. So the question we've been kind of asking is like, what are the good things you've discovered from this? Are there things that you take less for granted now? Are there things that, is there a silver lining to this thing for you? So I feel like I've, I've heard people say, uh, like thank you more. So I was in uh, Stop and Shop last week, <clears throat> and the woman ahead of me. Obviously, we're socially distanced. Um, but the the cashier was, you know, doing his job, and he's, you know, I mean, the cashier at Stop and Shop, you know. But the woman as she was leaving said, "Hey, thank you for coming to work today. I appreciate it." And uh, there's something like that where I was like, you know, I think that's, you know, it. it you start viewing like what's, uh, you know, maybe an essential position or considered an essential position versus a non-essential position. 
uh, and that has sort of become part of the uh, you know like the the lexicon of the day. You know, what's essential, what's not. Um, but I, I think Sorry, it's. I'm not sure about that. Alexa wanted to weigh in on that one. <laughs> she's, she's the, that Alexa, what a bitch. She's not, she doesn't care about the frontline groceries. She doesn't, she doesn't have to eat. All right, you're getting on, hold on. Alexa just got on phone. Jeff Bezos can't listen to this conversation. It's been recorded anyway, Jeff, relax. Um, but I think there's been some more gratitude on, on uh, maybe people or positions that were more overlooked in the past, you know, as people. And so, you know, I'd like to think that there might be coming out of this and be more of a uh, deep appreciation of, of, you know, what really is essential versus what isn't. Um, you know, because I think so much of, of modern society, whether it's social media, is really a veneer, you know, I mean, Listen, they're talking about, uh, you know, disruptions in the food chain because people at the processing plant uh, aren't going to work, you know, because they're sick or because they can't, you know. So when was the last time anyone in America, like, really gave any uh, surreal thoughts of what goes on at the processing, you know. So I think there's a lot of Americans who are kind of getting some recognition out of this that, and not just Americans, people worldwide who are maybe in a position that they've been overlooked for a long time because their position was maybe not glorified as much, you know, and I think that they're maybe, hopefully they're going to get some recognition out of this. Yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly that's the way I, I feel. I'm the same way. I've been, last so couple those of times, people, I, I salute you. Yeah, I, like I do that. too. Yeah, yeah. I The last time I went to Stop and Shop, I literally was just stopping as I was going and just saying thank you. And uh, of course, yeah. like, the what general was reaction was thank the thank the cashier at Stop and Shop. For, right, for, right. You know, I you mean, know? remember we got a brief glimpse of it. Remember there was the strike. I don't know how long ago that was, but um, oh yeah, what was that last last year? I think it was last, last year, two years ago, something like that. Yeah, it all feels like forever ago. But but that was the first inkling of you know this stuff doesn't just happen, right? It's yeah. You know, and and you're right, Christian. I uh, the hope is that we all start to realize that this stuff doesn't just happen, and that we all, you know, we need each other more than we definitely think. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, thank so you so much. Yeah, gentlemen. gentlemen. Christian, thank you. I uh, I look I look forward to the, uh, having a, a Miller High Life and uh, CMs with you soon. Uh, and, yes. Uh, we'll, Bruce, we're we're gonna do a, a party bike ride. We're gonna do a an impromptu. Well, maybe we'll plan it, but a, a St. Patrick's Day parade crawl. Love it. Socially uh, distanced. Lots of pure, Purell, lots of Purell. Purell. Yeah. I'll and be on no, the no, no, no social distancing. When this is over, we're we're putting you guys on the bike. Johnny won't pedal yeah. as usual. You won't no pedal. problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. All right. Cheers, Kristen.